Okay, hi guys. We're in the next part of our um, topic. So what we're looking at today is we're looking at alloys. And so just the definition you need to know that an alloy is a mixture of at least one metal, but it can be also mixed with a non-metal. So for instance, uh, carbon steel has carbon and it's got iron. So that makes the, the carbon steel. This is a, just a quick video. It shows you um, some good information about alloys. And particularly, I would like you to watch this because I want you to see how adding the um, second metal or the non-metal interrupts the process of, of, of creep and slippage as in, the, um, in the metal lattices. Okay, so do watch this and, and, uh, and pay attention to that part right there because it's an important reason why alloys are strong. Okay, so um, let's look at that. So alloys compared to pure metal alloys, they, they increase the strength and hardness of metals. Um, they're going to, by doing that, they're also going to reduce the malleability, right? That's the ability to change its form and the ductability, the ability to be drawn into a wire, okay, compared to pure metals. And um, it's because of the presence of the foreign atoms, so whatever it is. So if you're thinking of something like bronze, which is a mixture of, uh, of copper and, and tin, the tin molecules, the tin atoms, I'm sorry, are going to interfere with the movement of atoms in the crystals. Okay, um, ferrous. So when you see this word ferrous, um, anytime you actually see this F-E-R-R -R kind of thing, it usually has something to do with iron. And this is why, for instance, the um, chemical symbol for iron is F-E. Please watch this video. It's, it's fairly short. It, uh, it, it's by the guys in Nottingham uh, University, and they do a whole series on elements. They're actually kind of entertaining. Um, but basically what they're doing is showing you a pretty cool chemical reaction and they're producing some iron. So, um, so ferrous alloys have iron and then non-ferrous alloys do not have iron, right? So that's the, the main difference. And um, ferrous um, alloys are going to be magnetic because iron is magnetic. Okay, so let's talk about a couple of those ferrous um, alloys. The first one that we're going to talk about is something called mild steel. So basically, we, we're mixing um, uh, carbon and iron, and um, this is using used for engineering purposes. It's actually very tough. It's kind of a tough um, steel compared to high carbon steel, which would have a larger percentage of carbon, and then you're going to be getting something that's more brittle but hard. Hard. Okay, so there's a big difference between those two. Okay, so mild steel and hard, uh, carbon steel. Stainless steel. Um, we see stainless steel all the time. Uh, we make up, you know, it's made of iron, nickel, and chromium, and it's used to make cookware. Here's a, here's a, a video on how stainless steel is made. Cast iron. So cast iron is also a type of ferrous um, alloy. It's going to have a higher percentage of carbon in it. You can see that right there. Um, it's very strong but brittle. Okay, and usually what they do is they cast it in sand molds. Um, and you can use it for like engine blocks or cookware or manhole covers. Those are things that you, you might know. And then go ahead and watch this video. You can see how they, um, they use cast iron and make cast iron pots. All right, if we go into the non-ferrous alloys, I'm not, there are thousands of alloys, so I'm not going to go into every single one of them. But um, here we go. We've got uh, non-ferrous alloys. So those, you know, for instance, you can have aluminum alloys. <coughs> and if you mix it with copper and manganese, it's lightweight, weight, it's easily worked, you can extrude it, um, and you can um, manufacture some, some really strong, lightweight things, you know, for instance, an airplane or window frames and some kitchenware. I've, I have some aluminum pots and things like that. So this is uh, one of the biggest uses for it. And actually, it's interesting, um, when aluminum was first um, a, you know, discovered it was very expensive when like pure aluminum was first um, smelted, I guess. It was very expensive. And in fact, um, in Washington, D.C., um, at the top of the Washington Monument, which is the big, um, what are those things called, um, obelisk that's in Washington, D.C., the capstone on that thing is actually made out of aluminum because it was actually very expensive back then. Um, so the very tip of that thing is aluminum. So um, today, aluminum is quite cheap because we, we no longer, it's not very, it's not as difficult to extract it from uh, the bauxite ore. Okay, bronze. Bronze is a mixture of copper and tin. It's mostly copper and then a little bit of tin. And, you know, like I said, think Bronze Age. 
Um, today, it's mostly used to make like ships and statuary, so statues. Um, and you know, any any place that you you don't want iron oxidation, where that's a problem, where you want a pretty strong metal, but you don't want oxidation. This is why, like for instance, in in ships, you're going to have things that are made out of bronze because if you don't, they'll oxidize, and so they'll break down and rust. Okay, so it's better to have. Uh, something that's made out of bronze in, in certain situations so that they don't rust. Um, you'll also notice that you know on things that they don't want to rust, they paint them. So for instance, like the Golden Gate Bridge that's in San Francisco, the big red bridge that goes um, across the headlands, um, they paint that thing constantly. And the paint actually acts as a barrier from uh, to, to reduce oxidation of the iron um, alloys. Okay, but uh, bronze is quite often used in places where we want, um, we don't want a lot of, uh, where oxidation can be a big problem. And bronze gets this lovely green patina on it after it's exposed, so that's its oxidation. But the, the thing is that uh, you'll get that thin layer of patina of oxidation, and then it won't penetrate for, further into the metal, and that's why it's such a great um, uh, alloy for things like statues and ships and stuff like that. Brass is a combination of uh, copper and zinc. Right, and you can see the proportions here. And we use it for like or ornamental purposes, like doorknobs and things like that. Um, it's you know instruments, of course. This is a you know French horn, horn, and with uh, electrical fittings. Copper, by the way, is a very good conductor of electricity. So you'll see that. Um, okay, silver alloys. Right, when you mix silver with copper, you get sterling silver, and this is used for decorative, you know, for jewelry and ornaments. And you can also make a solder out of it. Okay, uh, silver also has a very, it's a very good conductor of electricity. I think it's the best, to tell you the truth. Um, so people use it in wires on very high-end high end things. Okay, and then we're going to get to super alloys. So super alloys are basically alloys that are above alloys. Remember that super, the actual word super means above. Like Superman means above man. He's a... It's a man above all other men, right? So he's Superman. So um, super alloys are better than your, your regular alloys, okay? Um, and they have excellent mechanical strength, and they have resistance to um, thermal creak and deformation, and they have good surface uh, stability and resist corrosion. And so they're used in, you know, things like airplane engines. So, you know, the turbines on an airplane jet uh on the jet motor, they have a lot of heat. Uh, they are, you know, subjected to some really, really high forces, like lots of tension. So, you know, they need to be very strong. And so that's where super alloys come in. So this is a, a video about some super alloy um, engine discs for a, um, a turbine. All right. Thanks for watching.